Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the first 30 minutes or so of your Valheim experience. Many commenters have mentioned that the first very beginning part of Valheim can be quite frustrating because you don't really know what to do and you end up dying a couple times and coming back to the center here before you really figure out what it is that you're supposed to do before you're actually safe. Because in Valheim, there's the daytime, like this, and then there's the nighttime, like this. And it's gonna feel like the nighttime lasts quite a while because in the nighttime, you can't see anything. And it's so, you're really gonna benefit from playing in the daytime, for many reasons that you'll come to understand as the game unfolds. Boom, there we go, look at that, we got nothing. Technically, you'll have a little bit more because you start the beginning of the game with some rags, and you're around all of these stones. Each of these stones represents a boss in the game, but don't worry about that, all you care about right now is these guys. This is a Veskriger, uh, I butchered the pronunciation. But these little red dudes, they show you where the next boss is. Valheim is a game all about building some safety for yourself to then have adventures out of. And nighttime is something you need to learn to avoid. Especially before you're comfortable with combat and you don't have that many supplies or good gear. So let's get you situated. The first thing to do is run around and fix your no wood, no stone situation. You'll find stuff like this, which is wood that you can loot. You'll also find the same situation except for stone. Like here you go, you can loot another stone. Do this until you have enough material to make two items, a hammer and a stone axe. So you'll need eight wood and six stone. After you've made your stone axe and your hammer, the game really opens up to you. Using the stone axe, you can harvest wood significantly faster than before. Look for these miniature trees. They're what the stone axe does really well at getting wood from. You'll find that it only takes a couple hits to harvest the bushes and the trees. And this is the best way for you to get wood. Later on in the game, you'll have better axes and you'll be able to more effectively cut down trees. But for now, don't waste your time cutting down trees. You'll be hitting logs all day. Keep cutting the wood until you've got around 50 wood. And that's plenty for what you need. It's good to build your first stuff very close to the base. And you'll need to get building quickly because it's going to be nighttime pretty soon. We need to be able to progress through the first night. So let's get our campfire set down. We'll need 5 stone and 2 wood. In order to build anything in Valheim, you'll need to make a workbench. Equip your hammer and right click. This will open up your build menu. As you find new material, you'll unlock new recipes. Go into the crafting menu and then select workbench. You need to build a workbench in order to build anything else in Valheim. So I'm going to put it at the base of this tree. Now that I've placed my workbench, I'll be able to place loads of different items. We're going to build a bed. We're going to make this as simple as possible, so I'll put it in this little clearing here. And now if I try and claim the bed, you can see that it needs a roof, right? So let's make it a tiny, tiny little room. Because we don't have much wood right now, and we also don't have much time. So you'll need to do this pretty quickly before nighttime starts. Just two regular walls will be plenty. And then we'll make one of these thatch roof ridges here and put one there and another one here. And now we'll put two more walls and here we have most of our structure. And luckily that was enough for me to set the spawn point. It's really important to get in the habit of progressing through the nighttime when it happens because otherwise you're going to be playing in the dark and as you saw earlier, playing in the dark is quite lame. You're already going to be traumatized enough by that when you go into the swamp. No need to do that to yourself now. When it's nighttime, you'll rest, and sometimes if you're lucky, you'll get to read a dream. Once you wake up, you'll automatically have a rested bonus, which means that your stamina lasts longer. Just as it's a great habit to sleep through the night, it's also a great habit to always have a rested bonus, because everything you do is better in Valheim if you're rested. Because the rested bonus is so important in Valheim, it's important that you know another trick for you to get it. You don't actually need to make a bed underneath shelter, although a lot of people think that. 
what you can do is just make a campfire and then just sit next to it. On PC, you can press X to sit. Once you sit, you'll see that you start getting the resting bonus. It's replenishable, right? You can always go sit back next to the campfire. And this is really, really useful. You're gonna wanna build fires and just sit to get this rested bonus whenever it runs out, because otherwise you're gonna be running out of stamina and you're gonna be dying unnecessarily. Now that we've made it through the first night in Valheim, let's continue getting wood. Make sure you're rested, and then find an area around your base that has a lot of these trees, because you want a clear space to make this base a little bit bigger. Right now it only has your save spot, but eventually your axe is gonna break, you're gonna have to repair stuff and make new items. And that's why for now, you need to focus on getting more wood. There we go, we have two more stacks of wood and we're ready to continue. We already made a workbench earlier, so now what we're gonna do is cover the workbench with a roof. Because right now if we try and use the workbench, we can't because it needs a roof in order to be used. So let's give it a simple roof. We're gonna keep things as minimal as possible here. So we're just gonna make a roof for the workbench instead of making some big structure. This isn't gonna be a pretty workbench, but it'll work. I like to use these corner thatch roof corner pieces. This works much better against a tree. If you don't do it against a tree, you might have to build a back wall, okay? Once you've placed that piece, then you should just be able to use your workbench. And now we can repair everything, and we can look down and see that we can build a variety of different items. The items you Well, congratulations! You've covered most of the tutorial so far. Now you know about workbenches, you know about spawn spots, you know about campfires. Therefore, at this point in the game, you have two options. One, to prepare for the Ekther fight, and two, to go fight Ekther. You don't really need that much. He's a pretty simple boss to fight, but it is good to make arrows and a bow. That's really the bare minimum. So we're gonna make around 100 wood arrows. But to shoot our arrows, we're gonna need a bow. And to make the bow, we'll need leather scraps, eight leather scraps, actually. So this means we need to go off and fight. Food is arguably more important than your gear. A well-fed Viking can outrun and stay alive in even the most intense biomes, but a Viking with no food will die even in the best armor. If you want to find some quick food in the beginning of the game, you can often look behind these spawn stone, these boss stones, and you'll find raspberry bushes. Also mushrooms. This is enough to get you started with two food items. Now that we have some food, and we made our stone axe, we're gonna go look for some boar. Boar are kind of intense. They won't see you straight away, but once they see you, they're gonna chase you and try and gore you and kill you. And if you didn't eat those raspberries and mushrooms, you'll die in one or two hits. Pay attention to how the boar come and attack you because you'll see that they charge, attack you once, and then they sort of run off and encircle you. See, he attacked once, he leaves, and then he runs away and comes back. You'll notice this is a repeating pattern throughout a lot of the different mobs. And use the stone axe and they'll go down pretty quickly. Each boar will give you some boar meat, which is gonna be really useful for better food later, and also some leather scraps. You'll need eight, so you'll need to kill. Take your leather scraps to the workbench and you'll see that you'll be able to make the crude bow. All you need is 10 wood and eight leather scraps. So let's craft that. Fantastic, we now have a bow, which plays a huge part in Valheim. But now that we have our bow and 100 arrows, we're ready to get hunting. Before you go for the first boss though, you'll need to do just a little bit of practice with the bow because it's one of the hardest bows to shoot in the game. I can pull it down all the way, right, and shoot. So the crude bow has a really short range, whereas other bows can go really far. So keep looking around and look off for deer in the distance. 
The clearings are really cool because you're more likely to see animals here because there's less trees blocking your visibility. So you'll find all sorts of boar and deer that you might miss otherwise. You can see there's a deer right here. So with a crude bow, as I mentioned earlier, you have to aim up pretty high. So let's try here. There we go, we got him, got lucky. Each deer that you successfully shoot will give you some deer hide and some deer meat. And pro tip, once a deer runs away, just let it get away. Don't chase it. You'll probably just run into a troll or something. So at this point, my food's running out. Always remember to keep yourself fed. Now we have enough practice with the bow. We're ready to go try and fight the boss. But to fight him, we have to figure out where he is. That's where this redstone from earlier comes in. Click on this stone, and then you'll see that it adds an icon to your minimap. So we can see that he is over here, which is actually pretty close. Now, before we head off, let's go and make it daytime again and get our rested bonus. Awesome, now we're ready. If we die off on this adventure, don't worry, because you'll just spawn back at your base, right next to the center. As you go towards the, the boss spawn, look out for deer, because you won't be able to spawn the boss unless you've killed a decent amount of deer. So it's probable that you're going to find the shrine, and then you won't be able to summon him straight away. And that's okay. Eventually, you'll find something like this. This is the summoning spot for the first boss. In order to summon the boss, we need to keep hunting more deer. But where are they? I mean, I keep finding more of these boar. And you'll, prob you'll probably have a similar situation where you find a lot of boar, but you don't always find as many deer and the deer get away. So it can take a while to get the hang of shooting the deer. One trick that you can use is to look along the coastline. You'll find that near water, there's often more animals. So you'll get more deer, more boar, more necks, a wider variety of different things. The easiest way to find the deer is to be patient. If you run around, then you're gonna, act, you're gonna alert them to your presence, and then they're just gonna run away and you won't be able to shoot them. But as long as you walk around patiently, then you'll be able to take your time, aim, and miss. <laughs> And as long as you shoot too far above them, then they won't even notice the arrow. But if you shoot next to them, they're going to get alerted. And then you only have a couple seconds to shoot them before they run away. I got lucky and I was able to get him before he ran. Sometimes you'll get these deer trophies here. We'll need two of these to spawn the boss. So let's keep going. When they're in the water, there's actually not much point in fighting them because you can shoot them, but as you see, the loot just drops to the ocean and then you can't really go loot it. Ah, there he is. Oh, I missed. Aha. There we go, we got our two deer trophies. So now we can go fight the boss. All right, we're at his spawner and we have everything we need, but look at this. Our food's running out and we're not rested. What did I say earlier? You gotta be rested and you gotta have food. So let's eat some of the new food that we've found. And then we need to deal with our rested problem. So I'll just make this fire and then sit until I'm rested. And then we'll be ready to spawn the boss. Here we go. Let's take our deer trophies put them in our item slot, and then look at the altar, and then press on the deer trophies. This makes the sacrifice, and now we're summoning the boss. Now, don't let the heavy metal music scare you. With some caution and a couple attempts, you'll be able to take him out no problem. Once you die in Valheim, you'll go back to the bed that you made earlier. It's a good idea to have some food around the area that you started, because unfortunately, now that we died, our body and all of our gear is over at the boss. Now, as you get closer, the boss is going to run towards you, but don't get too panicked. You just got to survive until you get your body back. 
As soon as you loot your body, you'll get something called Corpse Run. And this is a really good buff. You'll find that you heal faster, your stamina regenerates much faster, and this allows you to do more damage without having to worry as much about dying. Eventually, you'll get the hang of it, and with one final arrow, you'll have finished the tutorial of Valheim. People call him the first boss, but really, he's not the first boss. The first boss is the Elder. This is just the tutorial. You'll get a really cool trophy, one of the coolest trophies in the game, and something called the Hard Antler. Take your Hard Antler to your workbench, and you'll see that you can now make something called the Antler Pickaxe. And this opens up a whole world, because now you can not only mine ore, metal, and all that stuff, but you can actually terraform. The pickaxe isn't just something to get metal. You can do all sorts of gnarly stuff by digging holes and pits and traps and all sorts of things. Take the trophy over to this hook and then press E to attach the item. You'll lose it from your inventory, but don't worry, if you want another one, you can just resummon him and it'll and you can get the trophy again. Once you sacrifice them, you'll be able to get their power. Activate the power and see the little graphic. And then if you look in the bottom left of the screen, you'll see that it says Ekthir. Normally, I can hold shift to run. And you can see that I can run for as long as I have stamina. And I was able to run from that stone area, essentially to right here. Let's see what happens if I use Ekthir, which allows you to run and jump much more easily. I'm going to run until I run out of stamina. And here we go. Alright. I've now passed the stones. And I still have two-thirds of my stamina left. Do you see how much further I'm able to run with the same amount of stamina just because of this Ekthir bonus? It essentially triples, maybe even quadruples, the distance that you can run before you run out of stamina. And now with our antler pickaxe in hand, we're ready to brave on new biomes and exploration. The next thing you'll need to take care of is the boss of the black forest biome. But you won't be able to deal with him until you're way more comfortable. Valheim has so much to offer you, and I hope you don't let the beginning trick you up. It's just getting you used to all the things that you're gonna need to do to have a blast later on. So once you get through this part, that's when the game really starts to shine. That's it for this video, everybody. If you want to support my work, then consider checking out my tutorial all about purchasing your own dedicated Valheim server. This is one of the better ways to play if you're playing with a group of other people who like to play Valheim a lot. If you're just playing with a friend who only plays when you're playing, then there's no benefit to getting a dedicated server, really. But if you're playing with people who are, like, bothering you, you know, they're texting you, they want to play, but you are not around, in that situation, a dedicated server is a really good option. They cost the same as one World of Warcraft subscription, but up to 10 different people can be on them at once, and realistically, even if you have 10 players, most people won't play at the same time, so you can actually have a dedicated server with a community of maybe 15 to 20 regular active players, because naturally, they're never all going to be on at once. That's it for now. Comment below if there's something you'd like me to make a tutorial about. Many of these videos are inspired by comments from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!